Dr. Williams, you spoke about empowerment in your time with us on Wednesday and uh, how its implementation means more than just giving a person more to do or uh, having them shoulder more responsibility without help. Can you share what your sense of empowerment actually is and the common traps that well-intentioned folks can fall into when attempting to do this kind of work? Sure. Well, empowering would be, uh, yes, very different than just placing responsibility on young people to do something, let's say, that uh, adult youth workers can't figure out and say, like, okay, you all are young, you figure it out, like, your generation probably has it, you don't have the same problems we have, it's yours. Or, or you making know. them break the leaves, or empowering them to go raise the leaves outside the church. <laughs> or yes, <building>. yes, <laughs> or that. Um, yeah, it's not simply handing something off. Empowering, especially when we are talking about empowering young people toward beloved community. This is really offering young people, you know, interactive space so they can challenge assumptions or lead in certain areas with, with assistance, with guidance, to try their hand, to make mistakes, to learn, to contribute ideas, even if they seem far-fetched or feel, seem like they're dreaming too big, you know, uh, or creating space for young people to discern vocation, you know, like what's my role and what's my sense of agency and where do I fit in this work towards beloved community? Empowering is creating that kind of interactive space and making sure that young people feel welcomed into it. So in many ways, this has to be something that mentors, uh, leaders are, are wanting to be a part of themselves. It has to be something where they're saying, come alongside, join me in this. And along the way, perhaps you might be able to teach us some things as well. And so there is this, it's a sort of mutual learning on, on the way to beloved community. Um, and, you know, it's, it's welcoming ideas. You know, sometimes there, there is an assumption from adults, you know, that some idea of what can be done in, in a community is naive. Well, it is a chance to allow young people to see the kinds of visions that sometimes years of feeling a bit jaded can, you know, can suppress. And I think that's sometimes one of the fears adult leaders sometimes have in youth ministry is that these young people will want to do this and want to do that. And we talk about beloved community and justice. They'll want to take it too far. They'll get hurt, you know, mm -hmm. along the way. And um, this is really about creating the kind of community that can walk through situations together. And then perhaps even eventually just be in awe that young people didn't give up. But but they need a supportive community for that. Yeah. We talked about listening a minute ago and it strikes me that that's so relevant here too, because we do have a tendency to put, we have a tendency to put God in a box and how God wishes to work. We have a tendency to put youth ministry in a box and wanna make it very formulaic and, and simple for us. So when the youth come out with something bold or daring or outside the box, um, there can be some fear response, right? To mm -hmm. say, oh gosh, how does this fit in? How am I going to do this? How are we going to keep the kids safe? Um, and that deeper, I think that's when, at least for me, in my experience of youth ministry, that's when deeper listening and discernment questions are so important because it's, um, there, there, are, there are important processes there to really tease out, okay, God, what are you calling us to, right? What's, mm -hmm. what's next for us? Not just for me and the way I thought about this going, but for the youth under my care. Mm -hmm. yeah. And of course, keeping young people safe is important. Right. Uh, and earlier we talked about like critical storytelling. You want to make sure that you, this is being done with people who can actually walk with stories and hold stories and not people who are going to misuse stories. You wanna do all of the proper safety checks um, and provide safety as young people are trying out ideas along the way. But sometimes we confuse keeping young people safe. Um, we, we think that's 
sometimes youth ministries can think that's what they're doing when in reality, what they're doing is just being afraid of some new possibilities for change in the way church is present in the community. 